Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to the From the Depths general PID tutorial. Or at least one of many because there's quite a few on the internet slash YouTube. None of which I found particularly helpful. I have only recently figured out how to use PIDs and I did that purely by ripping a PID off of Faction Craft, the Kobold, and flipping numbers around and then it was kind of a eureka moment thinking, well, it was a eureka moment in the sense that I messed with numbers and I realized, oh, that's what it does. Or at least partially. I still am not entirely sure how they work, but I can fiddle around with them enough to make them do what I want. And hopefully by the end of this video, you also will know that much about them. So, I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible and as clear as possible because PIDs, well, they are a very complicated block and they are, it is really easy to go on at length about them and how exactly they work. I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try and keep it as streamlined as possible and try and translate into English a lot of the things that I found about them. So to start off with, this little platform right here is just our, it's our little starter platform, RTG power, got a mainframe on it, and it's got thrusters on the underside, on the top, on the front, and back, and sides. And this is what we're going to make fly with this, because uh, there's no way in hell this thing would fly without assistance. So, to do that, we're going to put down our PID block. So, here we have our PID general purpose and this tutorial is going to be about these blocks as opposed to uh, this one. So they're mostly they mostly perform a similar function as far as I'm aware but uh, the AI PID needs to be connected to an AI mainframe like that and this is the differences. General PID you can control general roll, pitch using hydrofalls, altitude using hydrofalls, general pitch, general altitude general altitude above terrain and altitude with air pumps and the AI PID controls naval yaw, naval pitch, naval roll, aerial yaw, aerial roll, aerial pitch and aerial altitude so it's a little bit more specialized, more specific rather than this which you can use for well pretty much anything really so we're just gonna be sticking with the general PID for now because honestly you don't really strictly need the AI PID and the general PID is just, it's really convenient for getting craft to stay steady at a certain altitude. So, to start off with, let's look at the PID itself. And you open this and what you have is a nightmare of math. I believe that this is straight up calculus, is how this thing works. It's got formulas, it's got this big scary graph here, it's got sliders. And it took me a long time to even work up the courage to mess with this, but uh, I am gonna try emphasis on try I might end up telling you very convenient lies instead of how this actually works and how to get this thing working so the important bit is you can ignore this and this and this is what you're really interested in so for now the first thing we want to do is altitude I want to get this uh, thing it's a bit of a stretch to even call it a rot I want to get this thing up in the air so we're gonna adjust the altitude so when we do that and we need a test stimulus one and we do that and absolutely nothing happens and why does nothing happen well we haven't set any values yet so to start off with these three values here are the most important bit and this is if you are like me and you're not good at maths, you have no idea what these things actually mean, what they stand for. So here's my attempt at translation and analogy. So, KP gain. What that means is you can think of like a PID block as essentially a giant invisible hand poking your craft and adjusting it constantly. So, it's like, I don't know, imagine like a paper crane on an unbalanced one on the uh, dangling off the edge of a string what the PID is doing is essentially like the pair of hands that's adjusting it and keeping it steady or adjusting it to the value you want and what the KP gain is is how hard the adjustment is made just how hard it's being poked so how much power is used 
And with this, you pretty much always want to start with a very low value. You want to start with zero, like that, 0 0.001, because you don't want to use too much, because then your craft gets a little bit wobbly, a little bit unstable, which can be a good thing. You can set this so that your craft bounces around a little bit. And TI integral time, or just uh, integral time, is going back to the crane floating analogy, is this This is how hard the adjustment is made, KP Belt. This is how fast the adjustment is made. Like, the period of time over which it... Uh, the adjustment is made. Like, the time it takes to set the thing back to whatever value is wanted, slash needed. And let's just adjust that. And apparently, according to the tutorial, you can set this, start off with this being off. Yep. And... TD derivative time is a little bit more complicated. This is prediction. This is, so, okay, so this is how hard you're poking your little paper crane on a string. This is how fast you're poking it. This is how far in the future you're going to predict the little paper plane tilting or flopping about. And how far in the future you're going to predict that and try and correct it ahead of time. So... Anticipation, I guess you could call it, and this, you can start with zero. And because this is altitude, we want to set test stimulus one, and we're going to do this. And has that value been saved? It has, so now we do this. You will see that... Our, wow! You will see that the little thrusters are firing down there. Actually, we might set this a little bit lower, there we go. So that's not quite working now, it was working before, now it isn't. Yep. And the reason for that is that the KP gain, the power, isn't quite enough. And you can see, you can mostly ignore this graph right here. I usually do because, I don't know, I have no idea what this means and quite frankly you don't need to know. Because unfortunately the secret with PIDs is essentially mess with these numbers until you get what you want. So we're going to up the KP value, actually just like that, see if that works, there we go. I actually get lucky, usually it takes a lot more time than this. Okay, so KP value still not high enough because uh, we want this thing to be at 50 meters, and it's not, so we're going to up it a little bit more. Up it to 0.3, that's looking more like it. Yep, not quite. So now, we'll up to point four. And you'll notice the graph is doing interesting things right now. I say again, like, you don't need to look at that. You could just look at what your craft is actually doing. How am I doing for time? I'm in doing this in record time, it looks like, so far. Okay, so still not quite enough. Still not quite enough. So now little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Getting there, I'm just gonna go up. Let's be daring, let's go up two values and see what happens. Very little. Let's go to nine. And this is, I know this isn't tremendous exciting, this is essentially what uh, working with PIDs is. It is fiddling around with numbers until you get the thing you want. Here we go, point 0.10, point 0.12. Uh, you possibly don't want to jump up numbers as fast as I'm doing, because uh, that can be a bad thing. If you jump up too fast, you might very well miss the value that's needed. So here we go, closer all the while, magic number of 50. Let's be, let's be very naughty and do this. And again, there are those of you in the audience who will know what this graph means. I don't. I don't care. I prefer to look at what my craft's actually doing. Let's go to point... Whoops. Too high. Too high, too high. There we go. Almost there. Almost. Needs more power. Needs more power. 
So yeah, this is... Looks like we're actually kind of reaching the limit of what uh, adding more power can do. So what we can now do is, let's drop this back down just to be safe, is we can mess with the other settings. You can, let's uh, make it like this. So over three settings, what happens? There we go. So now what's gonna happen is that the PID is now gonna try and achieve this value here, or whatever value, the default is zero. For altitude, you want an actual number here. For everything else, usually zero does the trick. So now, we have this. And we can leave it at that, like, because it's working. We're at 50 meters per second, we're staying nice there. In fact, because we're bobbing up and down, we can probably dial this down a little bit. So if I do that, are we falling out of the sky? Yes, we are. So let's go back to this. So PIDs is really, you can just mess with them. You can mess with them a lot. So we got a nice little bob here. We can probably dial that down even more, actually. So now we're there. Hmm. So now you see where we're at. Where are we at? We're here. We've got this little thing hovering quite nicely. But you notice it's moving around a little bit. Now, I do not mind that, some of you will, and the answer to that is simply just, well, mess around with it. Keep messing around with it until it does what you want. Use your story. So, now what we're going to do here is, can I put this here? So, have I unbalanced this completely? So, this is all very well. Now, can we make it go forward is the question. So if I do this, that's actually working very well. Okay, so this is actually going extremely well, much better than it usually does. So now the question is, what happens when we turn it? Well, for one thing, we've got a hell of a turning radius apparently. And now we're listing, we're listing, it's not very stable. So. The, the three PID settings I tend to use these days is altitude, pitch and roll, because those are the most general ways to do it. So for that, we can use another general PID. And same thing, start with these values right here. And test stimulus one, all that. And let's start with what's happening. Pitch is a little bit more of a thing. Although this thing's writing itself reasonably well so far, but we can do a little bit better. So let's go with pitch. In this graph here, again, so it's uh, not writing itself very well, so usual story, we can up the gain a little bit. And I forgot to mention that when you set up your craft, the roll thrusters, do remember to set them to roll. Otherwise, this happens. There we go. Let's set you back there. There we go. So, pitch looks good. Now we need to fix roll. And that is actually working pretty well so far. So, we're going to do the same thing for roll. And once again, you this is the important one. You mess with these. Once you're no longer getting the correct results out of there. So let's go to roll. How we do it. So she's a little bit wobbly. Which again isn't a huge issue because crafts which uh, wobble like this are a little bit more evasive. So let's up that to 0.10 and see what happens. Okay, we don't need to do that because our KP gain is absolutely fine. Let's add some integral to that. Let's add into rule three. And rule one. Zero. Nope. No limit. So this one in particular, we might actually have to use a derivative time, like some bit of prediction. So if we do that. There we go. We've almost completely eliminated that wobble. 
Still moving around a little bit. Again, I should mention I'm not the best at using PIDs. I'm not very experienced with them, but uh, if we do this now, if we do this, we have a thing that is actually staying reasonably stable in midair. It's flying, damn it. It's also pitching up a little bit, so we might need to adjust the pitch a little bit more. So if we do that, we do that. Yeah, so I'm going to quickly mess with this and get this flying exactly how I want it. Probably going to speed this up now. Okay, so I have pretty much gotten this thing to do what I wanted to do, which is uh, stay reasonably steady. I say again, like, it could take a lot of tweaking for me to get this thing perfectly stable and immobile in the air. But, uh, yeah, that's hopefully a very brief, simple way to introduce you to uh, how to work at PID, at the very least with altitude, pitch, and roll. And with this, you can make pretty much almost anything fly if you deadbolt enough thrusters onto it. And I will show you an example right now. This is something that uh, my man Sabertooth Proton did some time ago. This is an example of it. Get a rock steady PID on something and you can make something float quite well actually. So here we got altitude, here we got roll, these are the values he has for that. And, yeah, so not every every craft that uses a PID is unique, in a sense. But, like, well, you just essentially fiddle with them until you get what you want, really. And I should mention that if you're having trouble with PIDs, it's a good idea to do what I did and just essentially rip, uh, well, not rip, but uh, copy PID settings off a craft which you know works. Uh, the one I used was this one. So, this is instant also considerably one of the... one of my most hated craft in the game. This is the Kobold. Because this thing cannot fly without PIDs at all. You'll notice that uh, underneath here it has a huge amount of custom jets because this is basically a slab of metal and heavy armor. It's that's the only way it can fly, so... Oh, I never noticed they had a little turbine underneath it there, so... <laughs> so this is where I first copy my PID settings from. It doesn't have to be this one, it can be something else. But yeah, this is where it starts. And so just basically remember the three things. It's power, speed, prediction. Uh, ignore the fancy math, you don't need it. I have managed to get by without it. So... Hope this was helpful. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Let's all make things fly together. Farewell!